Christina Magigalluzzi. I'm a professor of pathology and director of anatomic pathology at University of Alabama at Birmingham. Topic of this presentation is prostate lesions with solid cribriform and papillary architecture. I have nothing to disclose. So in this presentation, we will review uh, high-grade prostatic interpithelial neoplasia in like ductal adenocarcinoma, intraductal carcinoma, and ductal adenocarcinoma. There are common and uncommon lesion of the prostate that have papillary and cribriform architecture, and they may be benign, pre-malignant, or malignant, as you can see from this uh, uh, table. The benign side, central zone histology, is the most common one. Clear cell cribriform hyperplasia and basal cell hyperplasia. On the pre-malignant side, high-grade prostatic interpithelial neoplasia, a typical intraductal proliferation. And on the malignant side, in light ductal adenocarcinoma, cribriform asthma, prostate cancer, prostatic ductal adenocarcinoma, and intraductal carcinoma. Let's start with high-grade prostatic intraepithelial neoplasia. This is a proliferation of secretory cells displaying cytologic atypia within architecturally benign pre-existing ducts and arsenide. So the lesion is architecturally benign, cytologically malignant. The glands are lined by cuboidal to short columnar cells. There is preservation of the basal cell layer. There is some degree of crowding and stratification of the nuclei, as you can see in the microphotograph on the right side. And there is a uniform nuclear enlargement, as you can see here, compared to the benign glands that are at the periphery of the microphotograph. Prominent nucleoli are also seen, and this is one of the characteristic features of high grade pin. Now, in the past, diagnostic criteria for high grade pain have been evaluated by different investigators to show that there is indeed some variability among uh, um, different investigators. But focally to diffuse prominent nucleoli is one of the most important criteria that everybody seems to agree upon. Now, some of those nucleoli may be visible uh, at uh, 40x magnification, at 20x magnification. Other investigators will require the presence of at least nucleoli in 10% of the cells. And you can see that there is a viability among uh, different pathologists. In this uh, uh, study, it was uh, done in 2006, 56 of the participants also would diagnose high grade pain in the absence of prominent nucleoli if the nuclei present prominent pleomorphism, marked hyperchromasia, and or you could find mitotic figures in plants. So here's an example of high grade prostatic interpithelial neoplasia. So there is a stratification of the nuclei, there's nuclear enlargement, and you can see that there is a coarse, more coarse or clamped chromatin. Nuclei usually are visible at 20x magnification, and this is one of the criteria that I want I use to make a diagnosis of high grade prostate cancer, and uh, it's probably one of the most common criteria used by most genital urinary pathologists. The presence of occasional mitosis may also be seen, and as I mentioned previously, you can make a diagnosis of prostate cancer in the absence of prominent nucleoli if you have nuclear pleomorphase, marked hyperchromasia, and the presence of mitotic figures. Here's an example of high grade prostatic intraepithelial neoplasia. You can see that there is some degree of uh, complexity of the overall architecture, some papillary projection. Nuclei may be easily identifiable. I mean, uh, there are enlarged nuclei in the presence of prominent nucleoli. And if you can see a high power film, most of actually the cells lining these uh, glandular spaces are lined by enlarged by cells with enlarged nuclei and prominent nucleoli. Mm -hmm. 